Hi guys, welcome to part 10 in our reading of the book of Jubilee. Today is going to be a little bit of a shorter reading again because we did not get through uh, chapter 35 in our Dark Outpost reading the week before. And so I'm trying to keep us on the same pace from the Dark Outpost channel as well as here on Esoteric Atlanta. So today we are just going to be reading through chapter 36 and 37 ending at chapter 38. I hope that makes sense. So if you're following along with us on the Dark Outpost as well, you probably know what I'm talking about. But if not, just know I'm trying to keep us at the same pace. So that's why today's reading is going to be a little bit shorter, just so we can allow the Dark Outpost channel where we're doing this as well to catch up with this channel. As always, if you want to join us on the Dark Outpost, please do. We go live on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link to the Dark Outpost channel is down in the description box below. It's its own separate platform, its own separate channel that's not on YouTube. But you can also find some of David's videos from the Dark Outpost on BitChute and Rumble as well. All right, let's go ahead and dive into chapter 36. So chapter 36 is Isaac's last words, his death, the death of Leah. In the sixth year of this week, Isaac called his two sons, Esau and Jacob, and they came to him and he said unto them, My sons, I am going the way of my fathers to the eternal house where my fathers are. Wherefore bury me near Abraham my father in the double cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, where Abraham purchased a sepulcher to bury in, the sepulcher which I digged for myself, there bury me. And this I command you, my sons, that ye practice righteousness and uprightness on the earth, so that the Lord may bring upon you all the Lord said that he would do to Abraham and to his seed. And if you all remember from the last reading, we saw Esau and Jacob kind of swear that they would always kind of be each other's keeper and brother and like love each other. I don't know if y'all remember that from last week, which also brings me to another point. If this is your first time tuning in to this reading, it might be helpful to start all the way over again with part one, starting with chapter one of the book of Jubilees. So you're not super lost on what's going on. And I will place a link to the playlist. The playlist is from the Dark Outpost in the description box below. So you can just click on that link and then find part one and go from there. So picking up again with verse four of chapter 36, and love one another, my sons, your brothers, as a man who loveth his own soul, and let each seek in what he may benefit his brother, and act together on the earth, and let them love each other as their own souls. Sounds a bit like uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? And concerning the question of idols, I command and admonish you to reject them and hate them and love them not. For they are full of deceptions for those that worship them and for those that bow down to them. Remember ye, my sons, the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and how I too worshipped him and served him in righteousness and in joy, that he might multiply you and increase your seed as the stars of heaven in multitude and establish you on the earth as the plant of righteousness which will not be rooted out unto all the generations forever and now i shall make you swear a great oath for there is no oath which is greater than it by the name of the glorious and honored and great and splendid and wonderful and mighty which created the heavens and the earth and all things together that you will fear him and worship him and that each will love his brother with affection and righteousness, and that neither will desire evil against his brother from henceforth forever all the days of your life, so that ye may prosper in all your deeds and not be destroyed. And if either of you deviest evil against his brother, know that from henceforth every one that deviest evil against his brother will fall into his hands and will be rooted out of the land of the living, and his seed will be destroyed from under heaven. But on the day of turbulence, and execration, and indignation, and anger, with flaming, devouring fire as he burnt Sodom, so likewise will he burn his land and his cities and all that is his. And he will be blotted out of the book of the discipline of the children of men, and not be recorded in the book of life, but in that which is appointed to destruction. And he will depart into eternal execration, so that in their commandment may be always renewed in hate, and excretion and in the wrath and in indignation and in plagues and in disease forever. Now we talked about this a lot last week on David's channel um, from the last 
section we read, and we also talked about this a little bit with Tamara last week when she was on the on the channel, where we talked about the severity of what these Canaanites do and their worship, how they go about their religion. And their religion is obviously that of worshiping Lucifer in forms of also other gods of the underworld like Moloch or Baal. You know what I'm talking about. And Tamar and I talked about that extensively as well as with David's channel. We talked about how this is a choice. People have a choice. So yes, we do talk about these bloodline families that are caught up in this nonsense and this evil, 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 evil religion that they practice. But regardless of whether you are born into a particular bloodline or not, we all have a choice to make. And to choose to do these rituals to Moloch, which I can't really go into detail about on this channel, but you guys know what, what I'm talking about. That is a level of evil that one doesn't just do hastily or one doesn't accidentally do because they're having a bad day. You know, we think of people making mistakes or sinning or doing something bad. Sometimes those sins are done in haste. You know, maybe someone will steal something because, you know, it's, it's a hasty decision or, you know, have an affair because it's a hasty decision or lie because, you know, they're trying to survive or protect themselves. These are all done in haste. But to actually make that conscious choice to participate in the rituals in which these Canaanites participate in, to go through with what they do, it's not something that you wake up one day and just decide to do, right? There's a lot of thought behind that because I know for me, if I were to witness any of these ceremonies, I would probably throw up. Like it would be traumatizing for me. So as young Pharaoh once said, and I really like the way he said it, somebody who does bad, someone who is bad, you can hug them back to good. You can help them return back to good. But when you cross that line of evil, there's no coming back from that. You have sold your soul. So I hope that makes sense. And we see this a lot in the book of Jubilee where God is telling Moses on Mount Sinai this story where he's saying, listen, once you make that decision, to serve Lucifer and you make that decision to participate in these rituals, there is not a whole lot coming back from that, if that makes sense. All right, verse 11. I say and testify to you, my sons, according to the judgment which will come upon the man who wisheth to injure his brother. And he divided all his possessions between the two on that day, and he gave the larger portion to him that was the firstborn and the tower and all that it was about and all that Abraham possessed at the well of the oath and he said the larger portion I shall give to the firstborn and Esau said I have sold to Jacob and given up my birthright to Jacob to let it be given and I have not a single word to say regarding it for it is his and Isaac said may a blessing rest upon you my sons and upon your seed this day for ye have given me rest and my heart is not pained concerning the birthright least thou shouldest work wickedness on account of it. May the Most High God bless the man that worketh righteousness, him and his seed forever. And he ended commanding them and blessing them, and they ate and drank together before him, and he rejoiced because there was one mind between them. And they went forth from him and rested that day and slept. And Isaac slept on his bed that day rejoicing, and he slept the eternal sleep and died 180 years old. He completed 25 weeks, five years, and his two sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. And Esau went to the land of Edom, to the mountains of Seir, and dwelt there. And, ja and Jacob dwelt in the mountains of Abron, in the tower of the land of the sojourning of his father of Abraham, so the land of Abraham's journey. And he worshiped the Lord with all his heart, and according to this visible commands, according as he had divided the day of his generations. And Leah, his wife, died the fourth year of the second week of the 45th Jubilee, and he buried her in the double cave near Rebekah, his mother, to the left of the grave of Sarah, his father's mother. And all her sons and his sons came to mourn over Leah, his wife, with him, and to comfort him regarding her, for he was laminating her. So at least at some point he obviously felt love for Leah, because we know when he first was forced to marry Leah, he was not very happy about that. So that's good. At least there was some love there. For he loved her exceedingly after Rachel, her sister, died. For, there you go. So there you go. After Rachel died, who was really his favorite, he grew to love Leah. 
for she was perfect and upright in all her ways and honored Jacob and all the days that she lived with him. He did not hear from her mouth a harsh word, for she was gentle and peaceable and upright and honorable. And he remembered all her deeds, which she had done during her life. And he laminated her exceedingly, for he loved her with all his heart and with all his soul. So this brings us to chapter 37. Esau and his sons wage war with Jacob. Okay, so the tides are turning now. They made these promises, these emotional promises to love and support each other. But it looks like some foreshadowing here that that's probably not going to happen. All right, so chapter 37. And on the day that Isaac, the father of Jacob and Esau died, the sons of Esau heard that Isaac had given the portion of elder to his younger son, Jacob, and they were angry. Okay, so here they go. They're mad their uncle got what was supposed to go to their father by birthright. And just remember, Esau and Jacob were twins, and Esau was obviously came out first. So I can see how there would also be a lot of confusion here too, because they were twins. And they strove with their father, saying, Why hath thy father given Jacob the portion of the elder and passed over thee, although thou art the elder and Jacob the younger? And he said unto him, Because I sold my birthright to Jacob for a small mess of lentils, and on the day of my father sent me to hunt and catch and bring him something that he should eat and bless me, he came with guile and brought my father food and drink, and my father blessed him and put me under his hand. And now our father hath caused us to swear, me and him, that we shall not mutually devise evil against his brother, and that we shall continue in love and in peace with his brother and not, our, and not make our ways corrupt. And they said unto him, We shall not hearken until thee to make peace with him, for our strength is greater than his strength, and we are more powerful than he. And we shall go against him and slay him and destroy him and his sons. If thou wilt not go with us, he shall do hurt to thee also. And now hearken unto us. Let us send to Aran, the Philistia, and Moab, and Ammon, and let us choose ourselves chosen men who are ardent for battle. And let us go against him and do battle with him, and let us exterminate him from the earth before he groweth strong. And their father said unto him, Do not go, and do not make war with him, lest ye fall before him. And they said unto him, This too is exactly thy mode of action from thy youth until this day, and thou art putting thy neck under his yoke. We shall not hearken to these words. So basically his sons are like, Come on, Dad, like you've always had a soft spot for Jacob, even though he got really mad at Jacob at one point, but you you've always kind of let Jacob just do what Jacob wants to do, and this is really pissing us off because it means that we haven't inherited what we feel like our birthright is to inherit as well. So this is just basically Isaac's grandsons very upset, um, which I guess I can kind of understand, but um, different times, you know, in today's in today's reality, most kids are inherit equally from their parents regardless of their uh, birth order. So definitely different times. All right, so here we go to verse nine, and they sent to Iran to. Adram, I hope I'm saying that right, probably not, but it is what it is, to the friend of their father, and they hired along with them 1,000 fighting men, chosen men of war. And there came to them from Moab and from the children of Ammon, those who were hired, 1,000 chosen men, and from Philistia, 1,000 chosen men of war, and from Adon, and from the Horites, 1,000 chosen fighting men, and from Kittim, the mighty men of war. So they're gaining this army to now charge Jacob and his his 12 sons, right, in their brood. You know, this is common throughout history. If you think about all the royal families warring with each other, and they are also cousins of each other. So I guess in a, a lot of cases, nothing really ever changes, right? Human nature always kind of stays the same. And they said unto their father, Go forth with them and lead them, else we shall slay thee. So they're threatening their father, If you don't come with us, we're going to kill you. And he was filled with wrath and indignation on seeing that his sons were forcing to go before them to lead against Jacob, his brother. But afterward, he remembered all the evil which lay hidden in his heart against Jacob, his brother. And he remembered not the oath which he had sworn to his father and to his mother, and that he would desire no evil all his days against Jacob, his brother. And notwithstanding all of this, Jacob knew not that they were coming against him to battle. He was mourning for Leah, his wife, until they approached very near to the tower with 4,000 warriors and chosen men of war. And the men of Hebron sent to him, saying, Behold, thy brother hath come against thee to fight thee with 4,000 girt 
with sword, and they carry shields and weapons. For they loved Jacob more than Esau, so they told him, for Jacob was more liberal and merciful a man than Esau. And yes, so Esau, obviously, I think this is true of a lot of siblings anyway. You kind of have like, you know, when you grow up with somebody and you go through growing pains with somebody and you share parents and you share a house together, you have probably grudges deep down against your sibling for certain things that might not be at the forefront of your mind on a daily basis. But when it's triggered, it's triggered. And it looks like um, Esau got triggered from all the stuff that had kind of been taken from him from Jacob as how he would see it or how his sons see it. And if my sister is listening to this, no, I don't have any grudges against you, so don't don't worry about that. But I can I can understand how that might happen. Okay, verse verse 16. But Jacob would not believe until they came very near to the tower and closed the gate to the tower and he stood on the battlements and spake to his brother Esau and said, Noble is the comfort wherewith thou hast come to com comfort me for my wife who hath died. Is this the oath that thou didst swear to thy father and again to thy mother before they died? Thou hast broken the oath on the moment that thou didst swear to thy father, wast thou condemned? And Esau answered and said unto him, Neither the children of men nor the beasts of the earth have any oath of righteousness, which in swearing they have sworn an oath valid forever. But every day they devise evil against one another, and how each may slay his adversary and foe. And thou dost hate me and my children forever, and there is no observing the tie of brotherhood with thee. So he's basically saying, You aren't my brother anymore. Hear these words which I declare unto thee. If the boar can change its skin and make its bristles as soft as wool, or it can cause horns to sprout forth on its head like the horns of a stag or of a sheep, then I shall observe the tie of brotherhood with thee. And if the beasts separate themselves from their mother, for thou hast not been a brother to me. And if the wolves make peace with the lambs, so as not to devour or do violence them. And if their hearts are towards them for good, then there will be peace in my heart towards thee. And the lions becometh the friend of the ox and make peace with him. And if he is bound under one oak with him and ploweth with him, then I shall make peace with thee. And when the raven becometh white as the raza, I hope I'm saying that right, then know that I have loved thee and shall make peace with thee. Thou shalt be rooted out and thy sons shall be rooted out and there shall be no peace for thee. And when Jacob saw this, he was so evilly disposed towards him with his heart and with all his soul as to slay him, and that he had come springing like the wild boar, which cometh up the spear that pierceth and killeth it and reconcile not from it. And he, then he spake his own to his servants that they should attack him and all his companions. And that is where we are leaving it for today, kind of at a cliffhanger there that now there's a war declared between these two brothers. Um, but again, we're, we're stopping here just to kind of have both channels on the same path. So, woo, it's getting good. I know I said this last week and I will say it again. There needs to be a movie made out of the Book of Jubilees. There's way more details in the Book of Jubilees than there are in the Book of Genesis. But this is a very, very epic, epic book. So with that being said, next week we will start with Chapter 38. All right, guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day and a fantastic week. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. Many people have asked me about the music. When I first started YouTube, we were required to have like an opening theme song. And Josh McKay is a friend of mine and a really good friend of my boyfriend's. He's my boyfriend's best friend and he is a, a musician that's been working for a really long time. And so I'm really grateful to have one of his songs, to have the rights to one of his songs to play on this uh, channel for you guys. Um, if you do like the opening song, the whole song is really great. If you do like it, there is a link down in the description box where you can like purchase the full song. Um, if you want it for your own music library. And again, thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this out to you guys today. All right. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.